Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I am Madan Ankapura, product manager in the Android Automotive team, uh, here to talk about uh, building media apps for cars. So I want to start with by actually sharing our vision, uh, which is to bring a safe and seamless connected experience in every car. What it really means is we want to ensure that the apps and services that the users are used to are able to be experienced within the cars as well. We have two in-car platforms. On the left side, you see Android Auto. And on the right, you see uh, Android Automotive OS. We'll go through each one of them in detail. So let's start with Android Auto. Android Auto runs on phones and integrates with the compatible cars. This means your favorite apps and services will be available on the screen in a driver-optimized way. You can interact with these apps through your car screens and the controls, but everything is running on your phone. We initially previewed this almost five years ago, and today Android Auto is available in 36 plus markets across 500 different car models from over 50 brands. We also have thousands of applications already compatible with Android Auto. And we, conti and we continue to see strong growth with the developer adoption. And of course, our partnerships with developers is a key reason for the great success of Android Auto. The second platform is Android Automotive OS is what we are going to actually focus on today. With Automotive OS, Android is running as an embedded infotainment platform in the car, enabling a much deeper integration to the car. From everything from navigating via Google Maps to listening music with Spotify to adjusting your cabin temperature. Unlike Android Auto, the apps and services are directly running on the head unit. And it doesn't matter what phone do you bring along with it. We previewed automotive OS, uh, Android Automotive OS in Google I.O. on Polestar 2 back uh, in May. So the car manufacturer adoption is also gaining momentum. We had previously announced our partnership with Volvo and Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance as well. I'm very happy to share that over the last several weeks, GM has also made similar announcements. We continue to work with the rest of the automotive ecosystem to drive further adoption. We are seeing a lot of interest and momentum on this, so stay tuned. Of course, ultimately it matters like what cars are going to be on the uh, road. So the first of those would be Polestar 2. If you joined us at Google I.O., you may have actually seen it in person. And for those of you who are all here, uh, we have Volvo XC40 right outside the building on the patio area. We also have some live demos in the Android for Cars sandbox. I strongly encourage you to experience it yourself. And finally, we're also seeing more applications which are getting ported over to Android Automotive OS. Uh, as you can see, we have Audio Best, Amazon Music, and YouTube Music. And these are screenshots from the emulator. And you can see them live uh, in the head unit as well on the XE40 uh, car. So in order to get your app ready for Automotive OS, there are four key steps. I'll go through each one of them in uh, some level of detail. So the first step is design, develop, uh, test, and distribute. So we'll go through each one of them and do a brief recap. Back in May, we presented a much more detailed design and technical talk on how to build Android apps for cars. If you haven't already looked into it, uh, I highly recommend this as a good starting point as well. 
But let's go into each of those four steps now. On design, we have published detailed guidelines which help us inform some of our design decisions. And you can find them at uh, g.co slash automotive dash design. Uh, we continue to update this uh, guideline site and we'll uh, continue to improve that. So doing a quick recap of the design itself, if you are starting fresh, the first thing that you may want to think about is how do you want to map the structure? and plan for the browsing views. How many tabs do you want, whether you want grid view or list view. The next is really trying to think about like, how do you want to customize your playback controls? Of course, we provide affordances to have uh, overflow controls, but it's up to you and your app to uh, figure out like which are required and uh, how many do you need. The next is sign in and settings. I'll go through a bit more in detail uh, later in the slides. And finally, as you can see, there are some accent colors that are representative of your brand that you can actually like choose. Going next to the develop part of the uh, application, there is a detailed documentation uh, which goes into the technical detail. So as a recap, so let's say, for example, you have no app at all. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have an automotive template in Android Studio that you can actually like use, which actually produces a uh, modularized uh, two modules, one for automotive and a second one for uh, common media session related things that will get you started. Another way to also start is start with the universal media player sample. But if you already have an app, but if you don't have a media service, you can start with the media service template. These are all templates that are available within the Android Studio. And finally, the main thing to note is like, if you have all of this, ensure that if it is monolithic, make sure that it is modularized. modularized. And the way to modularize it is essentially ensuring that you start with a new automotive module. So you will find all these templates within the Android Studio. And lastly, unlike your phone app where you have actually ported it to work on projected, you have to think about adding sign-in and settings because in case of projected, these things can happen on the phone, whereas in case of automotive OS, because it is standalone, you have to uh, develop a couple of these activities. So at the end of the day, when you have ported all of it, this is how it actually looks like. You have a shared module which includes media session and media browse service. And then you have form factor specific modules, one for mobile that may also include support for projected, and then automotive app, uh, which includes automotive specific assets like sign in and settings. As you can see, majority of the code is actually like shared. So if you have already uh, a media app that supports Android Auto projected, adding automotive support is gonna be extremely straightforward. So let me go back into the sign into some level of detail. Our intention is to ensure that when you are enabling your users to sign in uh, to your app, uh, you wanna make it as seamless as possible. Uh, by seamless, what I really mean is like as single click uh, as possible. So here are some few uh, suggestions or, or I mean like preferred guidances. The first one is Google, Google sign-in. Log in with Google sign-in. The users with automotive, automotive uh, OS that will have Play Store will anyway have to log in with the Google account. So if you already support login with Google, just clicking sign in with Google will actually get them started already. If you don't have that yet and want to support another alternate method would be using pin and uh, pattern. The way it actually works is, uh, as you can see on the screen, the pin will 
uh, be shown by your application on the automotive uh, OS. And then on the phone, you can validate that endpoint by entering these pins, which means now the uh, app on the head unit is validated. You can do similar things with pattern as well. Instead of a pin, you show a pattern. Then on the phone, you can scan it. And these are things that are already, you will see examples uh, of applications trying to enable endpoint enable endpoint when the same app is being used on a web browser. And finally, there is autofill with Google, which means if you have already enabled autofill on the phone, when the user actually logs in to the car with the same account, the username and password is right there with a single click. Now, if all of these actually uh, fail, then you may want to think about like as a backup, which means you need to have it, but that is not the first thing that you want to promote your user to use, which is entering manually username and password via the keyboard. So we have completed the development. Now you have to actually like test it. We, back in Google I.O., published an uh, emulator system image for Automotive OS. So we continue to iterate on this, and I'm going to talk about briefly what we have updated uh, on the on the emulator system image itself. So you can download these emulator system images from uh, the Android Studio, uh, but you should ensure that it is at least 3.6 beta, not 3.5, which is currently unstable. So we talked about the first three, and the last one is distribute, and this is new that we are announcing uh, here at uh, Developer Summit. When you have an APK ready, you definitely want to try to ensure that the whole flow of publishing on the Play Store via the Play Console and trying to get it onto a device is well tested. In order to actually like accomplish it, uh, we request you to we request developer whitelisting via the form uh, in the blog that was recently published. The, go, uh, the link is uh, on there, ads2019-cars. So I'm going to briefly summarize what we, might, what we will be uh, sharing with you once we send you instructions on uh, whitelisting. On the developer console, you will be using the automotive form factor track you need to create a closed track and whitelist your Gmail account. And once that is done, the latest automotive emulator image includes the Play Store. And that is a new update compared to the emulator image that was published back in I.O. And once you have all this setup done, you can use the ADB to deep link into the details page so the emulator doesn't contain the Play Store icon directly, but you will be able to actually go to the deep link. And here is an example of how it might actually look on the emulator. So we covered all four uh, steps. Uh, all of this and much more is available in the developer.android.com slash cars. And this is a developer documentation site that will continue to improve over the coming weeks and months. And last uh, but not least, uh, if you haven't already got a chance uh, to visit our sandbox, which is right across, you will see a Volvo XC40 Recharge, uh, which is an all-electric vehicle which was just unveiled uh, last week. And also, we have a couple of reference units where you can actually like, see some of these applications in action. Here are some resources, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs>